so let's talk about the regulation, the self-regulation. So I have in front of me some notes. Obviously, you can see them. Those who are on audio only will not be able to see them. That's fine because it makes me sound more professional if you think I'm doing everything off the top of my head. So at one point, you turned 500 euros into 1.25 million euros, which is around 1.7 million. And if I'm getting roughly, mm-hmm. I believe that, that math right, that was at the EPT San Remo. And it was 500 euro buy-in or $500? It was point. a 500 euro satellite tournament into the main event buy-in, which was 5,000 euros. So everyone was buying in for 5,000, but I won my way in because I couldn't afford the 5,000. Yeah. I, I won my way in through a feeder, smaller tournament. So a few just housekeeping questions about this. How long after that first tournament win, after the TV show, mm-hmm. was this? This was 2010, so five years. Wow. All right. So five years later, this happens. Presumably, in this tournament, there was less <gasps> and then crying and running away from the table. Correct. Okay. So what type of self-regulation did you learn over that period of time and then subsequent <laughs> to that? Oh, man. That, that tournament was nuts because, you know, the TV show was in 2005, I didn't actually really turn fully professional whereby I was living off it until 2000, like late 2008. Mm -hmm. You know, I was still sort of playing casually, couldn't really get my act together enough to, to be, you know, I wasn't good enough really to be living off poker before then. I'd been playing on the circuit now for like a year and a half and I played some bigger buy-in tournaments, but I'd never made like any like really big final tables or anything. And this Italy one kind of happened by accident. It was, uh, remember the volcano that went off in Iceland? Yeah, I do. And it shut down all of European airspace. I was in the south of France for something completely different and I couldn't get home. And someone, I heard that there was this tournament going on in Northern Italy and it was like a train ride away. So I was like, all right, screw it. I'll go there. Thank God for volcanoes. Bless that volcano. (laughs) Oh yeah. And then I arrived and there was this like this feeder tournament that's called a satellite that night where, you know, it was 500 euro entry and one in 10 people would win their ticket for the 5,000, the main event. So I won my ticket that night, like four in the morning and then went and played it the next day, starting at noon. And a very strange thing happened to me actually at noon before the tournament started, but that's like another topic I think we can get into later maybe. Wait a minute, Uh, you can't leave that. Just give us a teaser and then maybe we'll come back to it. I had my first of a handful of completely unexplainable borderline metaphysical experiences. Okay, all right. I won't say what we'll it is come now, back to be better, It'll be better if we talk about we'll it later. We'll come back yeah. to that later. But anyway, so I had a very strange thing happen just before the tournament started at noon. And long story short, six days later, it, it, turned up, it, it ended up being the largest tournament ever held in Europe at the <laughs> Leaving time. Leaving that undescribed is what I yeah. call keeping the audience yeah, listening. Yeah, you better keep watching. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and now, for sure, commercial break. That's no, good. I ended up being the, attracting the biggest field of players of any tournament in Europe to date, at the time at least, was over like 1,200 people. So huge, huge tournament. And six days later, I was on the final table down to the final nine. How many hours a day are you playing? I played like 10 hours a day on yeah. average. Some days were a bit longer, some days were a bit shorter. So you can imagine how exhausting that is. Also because the longer you're going, the more intense it gets. Because right. in the beginning, the stakes are like, okay, I might lose my 5,000 euro buy-in. But as the tournament wears on and, you know, there's less people, your, your chip stack is worth more and more in terms of equity. So your loss aversion starts to oh, yeah. go, go vertical. But by the time of the, like, you know, the end of day five, where we play down to the final table, the final nine, I, you know, for ninth place, I was already guaranteed, I think, 90,000 euros. I only had like, I, I mean, I think I had like 50,000 pounds to my name at this point. So I was already guaranteed double my net worth for whatever happened on that final table. And first prize was, you know, the 1.25 million euros, so like $1.7. And that morning, (laughs) I did not sleep. I mean, I I don't know what, I I think I got some sleep the night before because I'm somewhat of an insomniac anyway. So if I have something on the next day that's big, 
I often will just not sleep very well. And so you can imagine this cranks it up to 10. And I was dreaming. You know, I don't know if you ever have that where you've been doing a lot of a particular thing, like trading or whatever, and you sort of semi-sleep and see the thing. Oh, sure. Yeah. I was playing poker. I was like, I was lying there. I had pocket jacks. I had a king queen. You know, just these fictitious hands. My brain just could not shut off. And that was my night, the night before. <laughs> and I was just like in a complete tears because I'm like, I'm not going to play tomorrow. Like, I'm a mess. I was so nervous before the final table. I like threw up three times on the way, like walking down to the thing. It was, it was so stressful, but like, I don't know. Once we actually started playing, once I got the cards in my hand, it was just like, and I just switched into this like mode of, I don't know, it was weird. Was that the first time that it happened or that happened to you before? Not to that extent, because I think it was the perfect storm of like, it's such extreme nerves and being such a mess beforehand. And then, like, actually, you know, being able to play well. I don't know. The, the Delta yeah, well, felt more than I'd ever had it before. But I had had that before where I was, like, able to, like, get into the zone very well. I wonder if you just spent all of your Nervous stress energy. calories. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that tank was empty. Yeah. So you needed to switch to a different tank. Yeah, I don't know. I, but as I'll go into the story, honestly, it felt like I had something guiding me that whole time. It was a very strange experience. And anyway, I won. And it was great. <laughs>